this is TTV. I'm Mariella and this is Cassie. We're your hosts today. Joining us today is Susan Lubner, author of the new book Lizzie and the Good Luck Girl, which came out in November of this year. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. So excited to have you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. What was your inspiration for the book? Well, my inspiration for the book was different than what actually the book turned out to be, but I had originally started writing the story when my youngest daughter left for um, college, and my husband and I and our dog Bailey were empty nesters, and I had been doing some volunteer work um, for, uh, in Boston. Um, helping out with um, a homeless project and I just started thinking that I had this um, just experience with with dealing with so many people that were living on the street and it was very sad and I had these thoughts of well now I have this house with all these bedrooms and it just seems so unfair that I have this empty house and there's so many needy people that would love a bed and I started to write this story that my writers group said, you know, that's probably not the best book to write for kids. And so then it sort of just changed into a story about another kind of person that really needed um, some help. And this person was a young girl, vulnerable, and um, the main character helps this girl out by bringing her into her home, but actually hiding her there because she has, uh, there's a secret. And, and that's how the story came about and the inspiration for it. You mentioned your family. Is that where you normally draw your inspiration from, from your stories? Um, I often get inspired by um, my family and things that happen within my family. Everything that I write about is fiction, but I like to say that my stories are salted with grains of truth. So yes, my daughters and certain experiences that I've had um, have definitely played a part in inspiring my, my books. Um, when was your first draft? Like, when did you finish it? My first final draft of this story? Um, well, the first finished draft that was polished and ready to be sent out to my agent was finished at the end of uh, January of 2017. But I will mention that this story is a book about a girl who believes in signs. And so even though the story at the first draft or the finished draft was, was ready to go by the end of January, I actually waited until February 14th to send it to my agent because I thought Valentine's Day would be a great sign that she and an editor out there would uh, show it some love. Um, and it worked, so. What part of the creative writing process is the hardest for you or the easiest when you're writing stories? Well, that is a very easy answer, and that is getting the very first draft, not the final draft of the story before it goes to editing with a publishing house, but the very first attempt at getting a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, it's usually not very good when I finally get there, um, but I'm glad when I get there because then I have this sort of framework and I can really roll up my sleeves and start uh, revising and editing and really getting to work on the story. But getting it to that point, that first, very first draft is, is the hardest for me, definitely. How much of your like real life ends up in these stories? Um, not a lot of my real life. The story itself has really nothing to do with my real life um, in the sense of plotting the book. Um, but again, there are elements. I did grow up in Maine. This takes place in a small, small town in Maine. It, it is a fictionalized town in this book. Um, the main character, Lizzie, has, um, l loves cats and has a dog and adopts them and volunteers at her local animal shelter. And I grew up with a lot of cats, most of them strays that we brought in. Um, and I do some work for a local animal shelter as well. So there are pieces of, of truth in it, but as far as the plot of the story, it's all fictionalized. What made you want to write kids' stories? Um, well, I've always enjoyed writing. Um, I wrote all from the time that I was very young, little poems and little stories. And when I got to college, I took some writing courses. And those were not children's stories, but I was encouraged by my professor to submit those stories to a, a collegiate magazine, which I did, and they were published, and one actually won an award, so it gave me a bit of confidence. Um, but I started to write children's stories in earnest um, once I had my first 
child. Um, she's 26 now, but about the time where she was two years old, I was uh, reading a lot of picture books and enjoying them very much. And I saw an ad for writing uh, children's stories, uh, sorry, a course for writing children's stories. And I decided to take it because I had taken a lot of workshops and courses in writing and I had never tried writing uh, a children's story before. But I was reading a lot of them. And actually my first uh, three books that were published were all picture books. So that's how that started. Um, and that would be about 24 years ago. So that's how I got into writing for children. In the book, Lizzie is quite superstitious herself. Or do you believe in superstitions? Um, I do. I do. Um, I've always sort of been one to kind of look for signs. In fact, um, as we talk about when did I start writing for children, I had been writing children's stories for about five years. And um, one morning I was sort of lamenting the fact that I had been doing all this writing and I had been submitting all these stories and nothing was getting published. And I was feeling really frustrated and a little down. And at the exact moment that I was sort of moping around my house thinking about all this, I pulled the shade up on a window in my bedroom and came face to face with a big, huge, horrible spider. And I started to do what I always do when I see a spider. I started screaming and crying and jumping up and down. I was petrified. However, about a week later, I got the most awesome news that I had sold my very first children's story to none other than Spider Magazine. And so I, I know that a lot of people would think, well, that's a coincidence. Um, but I saw it as a sign. And so, yes, I've always sort of... Um, I don't know, a way to feel hopeful, kind of like Lizzie uh, s looked for signs of, of things when I was wanting to feel hopeful. So, um, Lizzie lives in a diner. Is there any relation you have to diners or anything way that, that related to your personal life? No, um, she actually lives above her, in an apartment above her family's diner, but it is in the same building. And um, when I thought about the setting for this story, besides being in a small town in Maine, um, I do love cooking and uh, baking shows and the whole atmosphere of uh, the diner was very appealing to me for that reason, so that I could bring food and sandwiches and cooking into this book. And so that's where that came from. What character do you feel you connected with most? Um, probably Lizzie, just because she does believe in signs, and I believe in signs, and um, her love of cats, um, and dogs, and, and animals. And um, I think that also when Lizzie experiences a loss in this story, um, and at about the same age as Lizzie, I too experienced a loss. So we do have some things in common. Um, I think that that's, uh, you know, I was writing from the heart, and even though, the, like I said, the story is completely fictionalized, there are pieces of my own history um, in, in the threads of the story, in some of the threads of the story, some of the storylines. So she goes around and finds and adopts cats and dogs from around the area that are strays. Is there anything you have to relate to that? Or do you love cats and dogs? Or? Well, the two cats that I had, um, we uh, adopted those from a shelter. But when I was growing up in Maine, we lived in an area where there was a big field around us and woods. And we very often, from time to time, had stray cats show up. and we took them in and fed them. And at the time, um, my cats were indoor cats. Um, but back then, uh, our cats would come and go, and we would leave food out for them, or sometimes they would come in. And we did adopt a lot of the stray cats. So yes, um, Lizzie uh, brings in cats like that as well, strays, and, and her dog that she has in the story as well, Waffles. He was also a stray that her family brought in. So. Did you contribute to the illustrating of the cover? I did not contribute, um, but when the uh, book designer at the publishing house was considering uh, who was going to be illustrating the cover, they did show me a couple of different artists, and I loved uh, Pascal Campion's work they had sent me, and he ultimately was the, design the artist for the book cover, and I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I love the cover. Cover's really important. I think they did a good job. Yeah. Is that? Is there anything else yeah. you would like to add? 
Well, I can't think of anything to add, but I will like to, would like to say that I'm very excited to be here and, and, and be a part of this interview, and um, I'm super glad to be here. Thank you for joining us today, Mrs. Ebner. And thank you so much for having me. Of course. This has been Trottier TV with Sam Studios. Mm -hmm.